I'm going to have you remain seated today as we begin. First of all, grace, mercy, and especially God's peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends of Christ, we're, I ask you to bring your Bibles and something to write with today, and you receive two copies of the three questions sheet. And you'll notice at the top of the three questions sheet, it says various verses you choose. And so as we begin, I wanted to start with some things I've noticed in my life. As we've had the opportunity to move around, we have noticed that sometimes words change, or they don't have the same meaning. When we moved from Wisconsin to Michigan, our kids had trouble because they were in school and they wanted to go get a drink of water. And so they asked, where's the bubbler? And the kids looked at them like, what are you talking about? The bubbler. They said, you mean the water fountain? And a Wisconsin kid will tell you, no, a water fountain is something you have in your yard that spurts water up. A bubbler is where you, where you get your drinks from, your drinking fountain. And it may be that when you were growing up, you, I, I was the youngest, so I often had the job of, of being a gopher. <laughs> go for tools, go for this. And so you might be asked to go get a screwdriver. And you showed back up and you had the wrong type of screwdriver. Because there's a blade screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, now there's a Torx and a square drive, and my goodness, there's all sorts of things. And you have to be very specific with your words. Because sometimes confusion happens when we don't all understand the same word. And I'm still trying to get to soda from pop. <laughs> Grew up with pop, and now it's soda, and now I just don't understand. Now in the South, everything's a Coke, though. Everything's a Coke, and you can have an orange Coke, you can have a Dr. Pepper Coke, or any type of Coke you want. But so you have to understand in different regions and different areas, there's a confusion of terminology. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't just happen in areas where, where you've moved geographical regions. It can happen in your own home. Because you might be told to go get something, and you come back with something different, and that's not what I wanted. Well, but you told me to go get this. Well, no, that's not what I meant. Okay. Now, understanding that, and the reason to understand that sometimes words have different meanings or different intent, that sometimes we can talk past each other, uh, even though we, we are technically speaking the same language. In the church, we have to be on the same page. In our epistle reading for today from the book of Acts, we are told that when the apostles went back to, the, to pray, they prayed with one accord. They had one vision, one mission, one, one task. They were praying about the replacement of the apostle that had fallen, Judas. And so it says that they were praying, they all were on the same page. They had one accord, they knew what they were about, and they were all focused on that. That is how the church moves forward best. And so today I wanted to ask it because this is an important question. As a church body, as we seek to set our vision, as we seek to set our agenda on how to move forward, the most important thing we have to do, first of all, is define our terms. Define what we mean, <coughs> excuse me, and define how we are going to move forward. It's interesting, if you ever get a Jehovah's Witness to come to your door, you know, because they love to do that, and that's fine. And I, I applaud their dedication. You know, their ladders leaned up against the wrong wall, but boy, they are faithful in climbing it. When they ever come to your door, the most important thing to do with a Jehovah's Witness is not to argue with them about Scripture, but to define the terms. What do you mean, Jesus is Lord? What do you mean by that, that, that there's one God, Jehovah? And we have to define these terms because, and, and they'll tell you, well, you know, the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. My response to that is, yes, automobile isn't either, but I drive one every day. And so what happens is you have to define the terms. If you let someone else define the terms, you find yourself either losing the battle or not being efficient, not knowing what you're supposed to do. It's kind of like the new song we just sang. It has a melody, and that melody was unfamiliar to us, and it's hard for us to pick up a new song the first time we go through it because that melody is a little different. 
And so now, understanding that this is what we're about, this, this sermon is, is more you than me. What we're going to do is we're going to get together in small clusters, if you will, and I'm going to ask you to write down what you, def what you feel the answer to this question is. And the reason is, is we're going to compile these answers and we are going to then present them and say, you know, are we all on the same page? And so, as you gather around in groups of two, or, uh, groups, groups of uh, probably four is good, or four or six, you can be, we're, we're not, okay, your group can be of various sizes, because I know you're Lutherans. And if I tell you four, you're going to go, well, sorry, we've got four already, you can't join our group. No, <laughs> it's okay. You can have various sized groups. But the first question that we really have to answer is, what is the ultimate calling? Excuse me, I'm trying to talk. What is the ultimate calling of all churches? And so I want to take five minutes in our, and, and have you guys hash that out. Find a, find a scripture verse if you can to reference it, but now it's your time, and so you're on the clock now. You determine when we get out today. So gather together. Okay, take about another 30 seconds and wrap it up. And as you're wrapping it up, write down on the sheet, and you can, that's why you got two copies of that sheet, one for you to take home and one for you to turn in. So write down what your answer is to what is the ultimate calling of all churches. And remember, one is going to be turned in. So, so and I do want to get a whole bunch of these.
Okay. <laughs> Got to get my mustache back from out. Okay, now as, as you've written that down, as you have, have, have disseminated that, and, and again, you're taking that sheet home with you so that you can even remember what it is. Sorry, my throat's a little rough too much auctioneering last night. And that you can and that you can build on that if you say, you know what, uh, I, I, we did this really quick, I want more time. Well, quite often, your gut answer, your gut instinct, your first answer is probably the best answer you're going to have. On a test, if you take a test, just so you know, kids, if you take a test, the first answer you put down, don't change it usually because it's usually probably best. But, so, I want you to be able to review that, to look at it, and to, to mull it over, to chew it over, and, and we'll, I'll go through these in a few minutes and give you some of the, the hints on these that from my perspective. So now the second question becomes, if the first is, what is the ultimate calling of all churches? The second question, and again, gather together in your group to answer this, what is the ultimate calling of all Christians? This can be different than for the church. So now gather again. Okay, about 60 more seconds. Okay, I'm just telling you the answer 
that, that the pastors come from, the mindset that the pastors come from. The goal of the church is to make disciples. But if I'm going to make a disciple, this is my final question because this is about you. And this is about what it means to you. What is a disciple? What does a disciple look like? How would you define that? If we're going to make them, what should they look like? When I cook a recipe at home, when I, when I, I download recipes online, then what they always have a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Mine often doesn't work that way, but that's what it's supposed to look like. So what does a disciple look like to you? And then we'll take a few minutes to discuss this, then write down your answer. Okay, take about another 30 seconds and we'll wrap this one up. Please be sure to write down your answers on, on a sheet that you're going to hand to the ushers as we leave. Because this is important. We're going to compile these answers in. And again, it's important for us to be able to come to a consensus, an understanding of what it is we're about. Of what does it mean to be the church and how do we reach out to others? How do we, how do we go forth? Because a lot of times it can, it can be like, well, we're going that direction, but that's not what I thought we should do. But we want, we want to be of one accord, as the apostles were. We want to be of one accord, and we want to work together in the kingdom of God to be about the business of God, proclaiming the word of God and teaching people about God. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's just being good stewards of our time. So... Again, at the end of these, this, this is interesting because each person has a different task in the kingdom of God. Each of us are given different gifts and different skills. And so how do we fit together and how do we use our skills together? How do we work together? All in the grace of Jesus Christ. Because he is the one who died for us. He is the one who brought us together, who united us in his blood. He is the one who has given us salvation and he is the one who now urges us to go and tell others it's good news. We live in a society that is kind of insular, that we're, we're, we're all concerned, it seems, our world is about the me. What do I get out of it? And that's exactly everything that usually raises to, to height in our society is about flipped totally opposite of what God would have us to do. You see, the world tells me it's all about me, God tells me it's all about others. The world says it's all about accumulating wealth, and God says it's all about giving it away. You know, so every time we see something, when you listen to what the world says is right, what the world says is correct, see if you flip it over if it's really more of what, what God would have us to do. 
So as, you, as we gather this day, I want to thank you for taking this time because this is an important discussion that we have. This is the beginning process of our visioning statement, of our mission statement, of how we're supposed to reach out and how we're supposed to be the people of God here in, in Calvary and San Lorenzo, how we're supposed to be the people of God reaching out with, with God's love. And so, again, if, if it's important for us to, to all be on the same page, to be of one accord. So as we go forth this day, may we be blessed in the mission and mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. And may we go forth recognizing his love is what truly unites us. May God be with you this day. Amen. Now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. <laughs>